Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I make New York City based adventure videos by you love and positivity. Today, we are on Roosevelt Island. Right now, we're at the most southern tip of the island at Four Freedoms Park. And I'm gonna show you some of the sites on Roosevelt Island today and we'll talk about the history of this amazing island. Let's get started. In this video, we'll explore Four Freedoms Park, the smallpox hospital ruins, and the Wildlife Freedom Foundation Sanctuary. Stay tuned for next week's video about part two of the island on Cornell Tech, the Octagon, the Blackwell Lighthouse, and the sixth oldest farmhouse in New York City. The most exciting way of getting to Roosevelt Island is by taking the tram, located at 60th Street and 2nd Avenue. Alternatively, the F train has a stop on the island and there's also a car and pedestrian bridge from Queens. This tramway was the first commuter aerial tramway in North America. It opened in 1976. It moves at about 16 miles an hour and travels the length of 3,100 feet in 3 minutes. At its highest peak, it's 250 feet above the East River. The Roosevelt Island Tramway was the only aerial commuter tram in the United States from 1976 until 2006, when the Portland Aerial Tram opened. It is not run by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, which runs all of the subways in the system, although the tram does use the MTA's Metro Card. For only the price of a Metro Card, you can see beautiful sights of the city from up above. You have incredible views of the city, the skyscrapers, and eventually you'll see the East River and Midtown if you stand on the southern part of the tram. If you visit the island, here's a pro tip. The red bus is free. It does a loop around the island. Take advantage of this to see the whole island in one day. You can't miss this red bus. It makes several stops around the island and those stops are labeled with a plaque with the letters R-I-O-C on it. My favorite part is seeing these streets lined up so perfectly. This is what it looks like if you're facing forward while riding in the tram. You can see the Queensboro Bridge there over on the right side and we're slowly making our way over to the East River. Here are some tall buildings, another very perfectly aligned street, and if you look down below, we can observe the FDR Drive, which is a 9.68 mile parkway on the east side of Manhattan. Here we are looking north up the East River. Now let's focus on Roosevelt Island. Over the years, the island has had at least four previous names. It was first called Minnehanock by the Lenape Native Americans. Later, it was renamed Hog Island by immigrants from the Netherlands. During the colonial era, it was called Blackwell's Island and was known as Welfare Island when it was used for hospitals between 1921 and 1973. Its current name honors Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The island is two miles long and has a rich, spooky history due to the prisons, asylums, and hospitals it housed over the years. When you step off of the tram, you'll be greeted by these large red letters and straight ahead, the visitor center, centrally located right by the tram stop. Walking along towards the southern tip, we were greeted by these friendly geese. One of the advantages of being here are the gorgeous city views you get from this side of the island. You can see Midtown as you work your way down towards the southern tip. The Chrysler building can be seen, as well as the UN, which I'll show you in detail later. Gazing up towards the north, we can see the Queensboro Bridge. Roosevelt Island is a great place to visit if you want to see the city from afar and take some very nice pictures with this backdrop behind you. Soon, I will be zooming in on the Chrysler Building. There it is, right in the middle. And over here, I'm zooming in on the UN Building. Now, let's head over to the first landmark. The Island Smallpox Hospital opened in 1856. This is where patients infected with smallpox were quarantined. 
It shut its doors in the 1950s after the smallpox vaccine was made available. The hospital was designed by James Renwick Jr. in the Gothic Revival style. He also designed St. Patrick's Cathedral and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. This smallpox hospital is on the National Register of Historic Places and a designated New York City landmark now that it's in ruins. The building was originally made of granite quarried on the island and was built by prison labor. In 1875, it was renamed Riverside Hospital, and in 1886, it was converted to a nursing school. In the 1950s, the nursing school closed and the building was abandoned. Only its shell remains today. From behind this fence, we can observe the remainder of the structure called the Renwick Ruins. The only visitors are the feral cats of the island. At the southernmost tip of the island is Fort Freedoms Park. The idea of the park started in the 1970s, but it was finally completed and opened in 2012. This park is dedicated to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States. He was also the Governor of New York from 1929 to 1933. The park is made of hand-placed granite. The stone reflects a lot of light, so it's super bright over here, especially if it's a very sunny day. Right now, we are standing on a 60 square foot open plaza of granite. We are closer to the United Nations building and can see some other tall buildings over on Manhattan. Working our way up the stairs, we can see that trees line the entire park and converge in a V. There are 120 of these little leaf linden trees. Here is the 340 foot long triangular lawn. It's a perfect place to have picnics especially if you settle your chair underneath the shade of one of these trees. Even on a super hot day, it tends to be breezy and cooler on the island due to the fact that you are on the East River and there's a nice light breeze coming from it. As we walk down through these trees, on our left side, we can see Long Island City. LIC is a residential neighborhood in the borough of Queens. It was once an industrial area along the East River. Today, Long Island City is nearly unrecognizable with its high-rises. These apartments offer many amenities to their residents. In the surrounding area, art galleries, performance spaces, as well as many bars and restaurants have opened up. MoMA PS1 is one of the museums located here. The modern riverfront park boasts open grassy areas, a sandy volleyball court, children's and dog parks, and hosted events such as movie screenings and musical performances during the summer. Stay tuned for a future video where we explore Long Island City. Here we are walking to the southmost tip of the island. Soon, you'll see that there is a rock barrier at the edge that is made up of 11,000 cubic yards of granite. As we get closer to the end of the park, this bronze casting of FDR is six feet tall. At the very end, there's a glass barrier where you can take some beautiful pictures. Here we are walking towards the glass barrier at the very edge of the park. It's very well done so that you have uninterrupted views of the river and the city behind it. Views of Midtown Manhattan can be observed. The Empire State and Chrysler buildings can be seen across the East River along with the UN building. The name of the park comes from the Four Freedoms that Roosevelt stated in his 1941 State of the Union address. According to FDR, the four essential human freedoms are first, freedom of speech and expression, Second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way. The third is freedom from want. And the fourth is freedom from fear. A portion of his speech is engraved in the granite as we look back towards the north, indicating these four freedoms. Here's a view of the plaza from the other end. In the distance, that little island rock that can be seen is called Belmont Island. It was created when the Seven train line was being 
dug underneath the East River, and pieces of rock bubbled up to the surface. Now that we're done here and have taken our fabulous pictures, we're going to head over to the Wildlife Freedom Foundation's Cat Sanctuary, which is located a short walk away from Four Freedoms Park. Hey there. Did you get nervous? <laughs> Unfortunately, the geese on the left unexpectedly pooped right before I took this footage, which is why I asked her if she was nervous. The Wildlife Freedom Foundation is located not too far away from the smallpox hospital ruins and provides a home for the feral cats in the area. Here we can observe pigeons, geese, and squirrels taking advantage of the hospitality. The geese were so used to humans that they walked so close to us. By the way, if you want to make a donation to the Wildlife Freedom Foundation, I'll leave their link in the description box below. And I'll also link every other place that you've seen in this video. Here the caretaker was telling the geese to come up inside the enclosure and they were actually listening to her which I thought was pretty amazing. I'm so glad we got a chance to see some of the cats and even the baby geese that were feasting here. I'll leave some of my other content linked in the description box as well. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, a comment, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss my videos when they go live on Thursday evening. Until next time, bye. Let's stay in touch on Instagram at Miss Anna Adventures. Have a wonderful rest of the week and I hope you learned some interesting fun facts about Roosevelt Island.